and gentlemen, you're watching In Search of the Self, and we are discussing on Swami Vekananda. We have Shakuntala Hawalda with us in the studio. Shakuntala, welcome. So, I can't wait to continue this discussion of how we can look at Swami Vekananda's life and apply his teachings to our modern day life. Beautiful question, Roshan. First of all, I deeply believe we must see and read the life of Vivekananda. See the life of somebody. You can't talk about it in one minute, Impossible. two minutes. You have to understand the motivations of this person. You must stop judging the person, but actually be open, open the door to his inner life. Now, when I see you, I say, ah, he's a handsome boy. He's worn his suit. He's, I like his tie. But that is not Roshan. That is not the real you. Who is the real you? The real you is that person sitting in that body-mind as a beautiful light. Can I, Shakuntala, touch that light? But I must become light. So, yes. you see, it is very subtle. This is why the spiritual life was very elusive. You can't catch it. But if you are truthful, you can feel if it you are, uh, yes, this is a, there is a beautiful story uh, of Muhammad. There was a drunkard who wanted to go and see Muhammad, but he was always drinking. So Muhammad said, why don't you come and see me? So his people told him, you can't go drunk. You have to be sober. It would be disrespectful. It will be. I mean, how would you talk? Of course. Forget about disrespectful. You can't even talk when you're drunk because your brains are gone. He went and visited the master. And the master said, no problem. Continue your thing. But every time you visit me, please don't take it. You drink it all other times. But you see the masters know how to turn the key. So when he told that to the man, and said, but I love my master. I love Muhammad. Then he threw the bottle. He would be sober more and more often. Yes. So he slowly became sober to see the master because he loved the master. And the master said, don't worry. You drink if you want. He said, no, but I want to see you. So the master helped him self-realize yes. in his own steps. That is the beauty. You cannot force someone. You can't force anybody. It has to come from within the person. This is what Muhammad was teaching the disciple. But you see, people don't realize a master is a master. A disciple is a disciple. Of course. And the disciple must obey the master. People say, ah, oh, if I obey, I'm an esclave. No, 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 no. Obedience means you're trusting the master. You understand the master is higher. Yes. So you touch the feet of the master, you do namaste. What does namaste mean? I bow, bow to, to the God in you. Yes. This is what it means. Namaste means I bow to the God in you. So the same synergy now, imagine it in the life of Vivekanan. What he wanted at the end of the day? Vivekanan had these 15 or 16 disciples around him. Yes. He wanted to start the Ramakrishna mission, to be able to preach, to talk about the truth, to live the truth. This is difficult. But he had wonderful disciples who lived a monastic life. Yes. They lived monastic lives. They were beautiful energies. And each one of the disciples had a light to share. So the Ramakrishna mission shared that light around the world. They had monasteries in, in the West, yes. in America, it was, in it the was UK. Founded, it was founded on the 1st May 1897. And uh, there were monks who were helping with the social service, running of hospitals, schools, schools colleges, hostels, development. And uh, they have contributed greatly to... Greatly. They to, were to, very... To, to, to the to modern the India? Modern India and modern world. Because all these masters don't only look at India as the motherland. Yes. They wanted to change the mindsets of people abroad as well. But it was a very tough mission. And you know, he died very early. 
He died yes. the early, in his early 30s. I think 33, yes. he was no more. Mm -hmm. But he had finished his mission. He had thrown the seeds everywhere. He had empowered the youth of India with the kind of talk. Yes. He said, please keep good company. He told the young people, speak the truth. Always speak the truth. Don't be afraid and be courageous. So you see, he gave a lot of power to young people. This is why I feel in a place like India or any part of the world, because great men don't belong to any place. They belong to the world. So you can start by teaching the life of Vivekanan and spreading his ideas, spreading his mission. And then you can change thousands and thousands of people because the life of one beautiful energy can change so many others. This is the beauty of, 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 of mankind. Some great luminaries. One candle can light thousands and thousands and thousands of... How do you get such beautiful metaphors? So in the same way, Vivekanand, who was a flaming candle... The flame will never die. Never die, never uh, die. Would you care to venture to say that Gandhiji did share the same principles as Swami Vivekananda? I think Gandhi was one of the people who were inspired by Vivekanand. But all the leaders of India... Today you have the Prime Minister of India talking about Vivekanand. He's putting Vivekanand into practice. So you see, he has inspired so many thousands of people all over the world with his courage, his vision, his mission, and his plan of action. So Vivekananda did go to the US a second time. He has gone and he has spread his ideas more so, and so more. So he started in India, he went he to has the Chicago, spread in to Chicago, he came back again. And then again he goes. He traveled a lot in India. Yes. And then he goes again. But he needed to find ways and means for the upliftment of the poverty-stricken people. So he gets some of the answers, but then, he, as I told you, he dies very early, yes. 33. He did not live up to 60 or 70. And when he goes, the other brothers the missionary brothers. The other sannyasis yes, continue his they legacy. they continue his legacy. So I think every human being has a task, has a mission, and you have a person like Vivekanand doing the best during his life. Now you see, he lives the life of a sannyasin. Sannyasin is somebody who has renounced the married life. There's a, two little beautiful episodes I would like to share with you. One about idol worship. Uh, Vivekanand was with a Maharaja. The Maharaja says, uh, Swami Vivekanan, I don't agree that uh, about the idol worship of Hindus. You know, you'll have so many statues all over the place. So Vivekanan just says, fine. He asked the servant, please bring me the photo of the Maharaja. All right. And he brings the photo of the Maharaja and he says, I'm going to spit on it. The servant says, oh, what are you doing? So he says, what is this? It's not real. It's only an idol. Yes. Then he explains that idol worship is only remembering God through an image. So it's such a beautiful way he explained that just like you don't like me to spit on the photo of the king, in the same way, when I make a stone god, or I make a murti, or I make any image, it is only a symbol of the big source because the big source is nameless. It is too infinite. How can you capture you God? Put you an can't input. put. So the Hindus make different images and they pray. But when they close their eyes, they are with God. Before his death, he had written to a Western follower. I would like to share a quote with you, but please enlighten us. It may be that I shall find it good and to get it outside my body, to cast it off like a worn out garment. Mm -hmm. But I shall not cease to work. I shall inspire men everywhere until the whole world shall know that it is one with God. Beautiful, very beautiful. Vivekanan was aware of the time of his death. Yes. And he told his brother disciples not to disturb him he goes to the room closes the door and he closes his eyes and goes into meditation and samadhi then a little while afterwards he calls one of the monks inside he says please 
I feel a bit warm here and my legs. Can you just hold or massage my leg? As the monk starts massaging his legs, he takes his last breath and he goes into Samadhi. Samadhi he ascended. He, he, yes, he ascended. That is the right word. So he goes into the light in a very conscious way. Now this is a test of somebody who was very genuine. You cannot die the way he died without being a master. In he was not right. selfish and had materialistic attachment to the world. So he was ready to go. He was prepared to go. But this is the life of somebody who has taken the world by storm. In a nutshell, would you say that Swami Vivekananda wanted to preach the world is one with God? To achieve the oneness. The oneness. He had to understand the difficulties that Indians were going through, people around him, and even in the West, and hopefully try to convince people that 100 percent it is not easy before you can change the mindset of somebody it is very difficult but according to me vivekanan tried and you can see a heroic struggle against the darkness against difficulties to show people that they are indeed gods would it be wrong to say that it was even harder because of the oppression at that time under the British of colony. Of course, but every time, even today we are oppressed by materialism. There is oppression all the time, Roshan. But how genuine are you? How truthful are you? This is the question. And that each man has to find out for himself. I cannot change anybody. No. Nobody can change anybody. But you have to change yourself. Transformation. This is the answer. Shanguntala, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only time we have for now. Please tune in next week and we will be talking about Rabindranath Tagore. Thank you.